Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ross, and I'm about to make a short video looking at how you would take an analog tool that you'd find in a lab and determine its absolute uncertainty or its absolute error, they, they mean the same thing. Um, and you would repeat this process for any analog tool. So what's an analog tool? An analog tool is anything that's not a digital tool. What's a digital tool? Well, it has a digital display. So Analog tools are rulers, glassware with markings on anything like that. So this would apply to that situation. So I'm going to share my screen and I have uh, this page set up so we can start to write some things down. Okay, so let's, let's get going. So in this example, I'm gonna take a ruler. So let's take, for example, a ruler. So let's imagine a piece of this ruler. Let's say it's got markings of three here and it's got another marking of four here. So it continues to the left and right. And let's say between three and four, there are 10 little marks, which clearly I'm not drawing to scale here, but I'll do my best to make it look as realistic as possible. So it's got 10 markings. And let's say with this ruler, we have to measure the length of two objects. So I'm going to have an object here. Let's say the object is coming in from the left. And I'm gonna make sure that this object, let's call this object A. Object A, I've done it so it's exactly on this line. At least that's what I'm trying to show. It's exactly on that line. And then object B, I'll try and make a tad bit longer. And so object B, I'm gonna have between these lines. Okay, let's call that object B. Point is how long is object A and B, but before we do that, we have to calculate the absolute error of our analog tool. Okay, so let's go back to our black pen. Um, so there's a couple of steps that we're gonna have to do. So I'm going to uh, scroll down here, give us a bit of space. So here's the general steps that you would take. Uh, step number one, take the absolute difference between any two adjacent measured values. So take the absolute difference between any two adjacent measured values. Any two adjacent um, measurement values. So in this case, we've got the values of three and four. So the absolute difference would be the big one minus the little one. Oh, and let's say this is a ruler. So the units, I don't know if I specified them. The units are gonna be centimeter. So this is a centimeter ruler. Okay, so the absolute difference of these two measurements would be big minus small, four minus three centimeter is one centimeter. Okay, so that's nice and straightforward. Step number two, we're gonna divide the value from step one by the number of marks between the numbers. So divide the value from step one by the number of marks or markings between the numbers, between the numbers. So here, there would be 10, because if we look again at the ruler, there were 10 marks, okay? So, so far, so good. So doing 
this math, we'd have our value from step one, which is one centimeter, divided by the number of marks. So one centimeter divided by 10 is 0.1 centimeter. Okay. The result from step one is called the increment. So the result from step one is the increment i. So every tool has an increment. It's the smallest spacing that's given on the device as manufactured. Okay, so once we have the increment, we now have to identify the family. So step three, we're going to identify the tools family. Identify the tools family. And there's only three options. Typically it's gonna be either the twos family, the fives family, or the tens family. You belong to the twos family if the increment contains the number two. Anywhere, it can be two, it can be 0.2, it can be 20, it can be 2000, but it has to contain the number two. You belong to the fives family if the increment contains the number five. It can be 5, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, 500, 5,000, et cetera, as long as you contain the number five. And you belong to the tens family if the increment contains a one, not a 10. So it can be one, it can be 10, it can be 0 0.1, it can be a thousand, but it has to contain the number one somewhere. Okay. So let's make that last semicolon a period because that's the end of that statement. Okay, so we've identified the family. So here, if you recall, our increment contained a one. Our increment was 0.1, right? So it's in the tens family. Um, so the family, which I'm gonna call F, equals 10. Okay, 10 because the, uh, the increment contained the one, so it's in the tens family. All right, let's scroll down. So step four, now we can calculate the absolute uncertainty. The absolute uncertainty, which I'll call AU, is the increment over the family. So here, that was the increment 0.1 centimeter over the family 10. And that gives you 0 0.01 centimeter. So what, now we've got the absolute uncertainty for this analog tool, what does it mean? It means that this tool or this ruler in, in this case, because that's what the tool was, can measure to plus or minus the absolute uncertainty. So anytime you use this tool, you must give two decimals to the nearest 0 0.01 centimeter. You can't choose to give more, you can't choose to give less. It's locked into the instrument that you're using. So armed with that knowledge, let's see if we can go back and we'll estimate what A and B are. So let's have a good go. So I know it's plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeter. That's my absolute uncertainty. So now I've got to give measurements. So we know that this object A it's 3.5, 3.6, and it looks like it's exactly on 3.6. So we can say 3.60, because I think it's exactly centimeter. And I've given it to, in fact, we can be even more accurate than that. We can say 3.60 plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeter. I'm saying what I think it is, but I'm being honest enough to declare how uncertain I am. 
So if you measured the same object using the same tool and you said it was 3.59, that's exactly what I said, 3.60. So long as we're within the declared uncertainty, we're saying the same thing. Uh, B, let's say it's exactly in the middle, then it would be 3.6, 3.7, five plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeter. Okay. If I had something, let's say I had something that was here. So not quite in the middle, but let's say a bit closer to one of the lines than the middle would be. So let's call this C. then clearly it's not going to end in um, uh, it's not going to end in five because that that would mean it's right in the middle right so let's see 3.67 3.8 something right 3.8 uh, five would be in the middle it's not quite nine but a reasonable guess would be five, eight, plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeter. Okay, so we'll wrap up this video now. So the take home message for this video, so a quick take home, take home uh, message, from this video. Whenever you do a lab, whether it be a simulation or a hands-on lab in a wet lab, and a procedure says draw 10 milliliter or weigh out five centimeters, that's the procedure. That's got nothing to do with what you actually write down in your data. Whenever you're using an analog tool, an analog tool, that means without a digital readout, you must, it's not an option, always first determine the absolute uncertainty of the tool. First thing you have to do, no choice, then actually use it. Then record any measurements made with the tool to plus or minus the absolute uncertainty. Now, measurement. I have to be very careful here. I'm gonna make that singular. Me Let's get the ink back. Record a measurement. Caution doesn't directly apply to combined measurements. Doesn't exactly apply to combined measurements. What do I mean by combined measurement? When you take more than one measurement and you have to look at the accumulation of error. And I have another video on that, so please look at that, combined errors. Doesn't exactly apply to combined errors. And I'm going to tell you to see the other video for a combined error example. Okay, let's keep this one short and sweet. That will conclude this video.